This video is about light aircraft above the 600 kilogram weight limit. To fly these, you'll need a private pilot's license. This is where you start your career as a professional pilot. With this license, you can add multi-engine ratings, commercial ratings, instrument ratings to fly in bad weather, and night ratings, and basically everything else. In Europe, certain aircraft, mostly the newer ones that aren't built to be under 600 kilograms, are under the ESA regulations. This means that you'll need a PPLA license to fly them. And you'll likely start off with these licenses flying a Cessna 172 or Piper Archer in your training. In the USA, this license is also called the Private Pilot's License. So for training in the USA, you're going to need a minimum of 40 hours flight time to get that PPL and 250 hours to get the commercial license. In the UK, for the PPL, you'll need at least 45 hours, but most take about 60 hours to get that PPL. You'll also need to pass a medical examination. This is something that you have to take numerous times throughout your flying career to prove that you're still fit to fly, and they get more frequent as you get older. The medical can be something that puts some pilots off, particularly older pilots, because they know that they're going to get more frequent and maybe their health is going to deteriorate. Don't let that put you off though. If you've got half decent health and you can see pretty well with glasses and your hearing's not too bad, then it should be a problem. In the USA, you might want to look into the Recreational Private Pilot's License. The Recreational License limits you to four-seater aircraft of 180 horsepower or less, which is pretty good. In the UK as well, there's also the NPPL SSEA license, which is very similar, allows you to fly up to four-seater aircraft, which aren't the European certified aircraft. So some of the more vintage aircraft and older aircraft, basically, and the non-part 21 aircraft. Again, that's where it gets kind of complicated. I might make a video on that in the future. So let's look at costs. The PPL is going to cost around 10,000 US dollars, and in the UK, it's going to cost about 10,000 pounds to get. This license is a bit more involved than the light sports license or the micro light license. And in the USA, it also contains some night flying, which can be quite fun, but it's not something that you need to do in the UK for the PPLA. Also, you're more likely to be flying into bigger airports, which means more radio work, ground control, and you're going to be paying higher landing fees. That's all going to put the price up a bit. Also, the aircraft in this price range are going to cost a lot more. You're going to get closer to the realms of $100,000 aircraft in this sort of price range. In Europe, all the maintenance has to be signed off by an ESA certified engineer, and many pay the engineers to do the work. Of course, that all comes at a cost as well. But the good news is for safety, these are one of the more safer types of flying. The training is more involved, which is a good thing when it comes to safety, and the aircraft are bigger and more powerful with more metal and stronger components, which is better for impact. And also they tend to have more instruments, which means that you can fly through bad weather, and that's also gonna be a help when it comes to safety. You're also more likely to be landing at manned and controlled airfields with tarmac runways, and they might even have fire and rescue crews at hand. You're also more likely to be in radio contact with people over your whole trip and file flight plans. The aircraft can be more expensive and a lot of them actually come with more safety features such as ballistic parachutes and auto land. Also in Europe at least the aircraft are held to ESA standards which is more expensive to maintain but arguably safer. Feel free to leave your thoughts on safety in the comments also, if you are a pilot currently training or has passed and has advice for the viewers, please leave your thoughts and experiences in the comments. Next, we'll look at auto gyros, also known as gyroplanes. Yes, they do look like mini helicopters, but they really aren't. They do offer advantages to fixed wing aircraft though, and they can land in really small areas and they can't spin or stall. See my video here and the link for that video is in the description.